here we are with Into the Stall, and we have two Brits playing two thirds of an American family. Yeah. But where do we find the Morris family at the beginning of this story? Somewhere between uh, sort of some weird mid Atlantic accent. No, I'm kidding. I know what you meant there. Um, yeah, we, we, we sort of start with the family in, in a little bit of uh, chaos. You know, the, the mother has, has died recently, and there's a bit of estrangement between the two boys. And on this particular day, um, the, the, the lads are engaged in, in making a time capsule video for, for future posterity, and, and there is a storm on the way. So it's all set up rather conveniently to be shot. As you say, the storm comes, boy, it does come, doesn't yeah, it? And yeah. uh, kind of brings together a disparate group of people uh, across the course of the film. Richard, one of the relationships that really develops is between your character Gary and uh, climatologist Alan Stone. Alison Stone, sorry, mm. who's played mm. by Sarah Wayne Callies. Tell us about working with Sarah to create that bond. Um, the two characters meet sort of in the middle of the movie, um, but we'd, we'd sort of met early on, and, and I realised from the beginning that she'd come in with so much information. She really had become... A, a little bit of a, of a an expert on on the storm. So, uh, and also she was, you know, she is Native American. So uh, I spent a lot of time around her, listening to her accent, practicing mine, uh, asking her about storms. Um, and we, you know, she, she was just really good fun to work with. She was up for everything, every stunt that could possibly be done. Uh, and I think she's created a character which is a really great female role model as well. Yeah. You know, right at the centre of the story to have a very strong female character like that. Yeah, I mean, she's she's almost the real hero of, of, of the piece. Yeah. And, uh, in, the, in she's the only one that knows what's happening and knows how to um, combat the our monster basically. Yeah. And also, all of the, all of the pieces of the character, like each character, finds that they need something from from one another in order to to survive. So. And meanwhile, Max, uh, Donny finally gets to spend some time with his high school crush, Caitlin. Not, yeah. not quite in the way he probably imagined. No, it didn't work out quite that well, no. <laughs> yeah. How did you find working out in water tanks, I imagine, with Alicia Denman? Yeah, it was, uh, it was, a, it was a, those were quite difficult and um, challenging evenings. But uh, my favourite my favorite on the shoot, we were kind of being um, drowned from four in the afternoon till four in the morning. Um, and, you know, sometimes the water level got too high and we just, like, sort of garbled through. Uh, what we were supposed to say, um, so that was that was interesting and uh, and an intense thing. And as you see, you know, you normally you have you have the the crew around you, and this was just me, Alicia, and uh, a plucky cameraman down there uh, shooting this stuff. So it was um there was there was an intimacy about it, while it was also uh, quite scary, you know, quite difficult. Um, we should talk about the found footage element of the film. Um, a lot of effort has gone to to give it a kind of documentary or home movie feel throughout, I thought. And the story seems to unfold in real time. Um, I wondered how that affects you as actors when you work like that. Yeah, I, I kind of think of it now as found footage. It, it started yeah. very, very religious to the, to the sort of doctrine of, of found footage, but it, it became clear that it wasn't going to make for a particularly kind of epic film. Uh, on, a, on a daily basis, the, the, the experience of working like that, though, was that there was always um, a camera team, but often a, another character that would hold a camera. And some of the footage was really shot on iPhone and, uh, you know, one of those... Uh, there was a GoPro at one point, wasn't yeah, there? Yeah, we have... I think they've all been cut together. So you always had to know who was holding the camera, particularly when it was one of my boys. So. Yeah, I think I think Matt Walsh might have a shot in there and, um, yeah. and Lee Whitaker. Some, they, 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 we all had these cameras running the whole time just in case we caught anything good. I think my little shaky hands wouldn't... They didn't work. I don't think any of my footage actually made it. But, uh, yeah, it was interesting. It was interesting to, to, to learn how to to... You know, usually you're ignoring the cameras and learning how to kind of work with them as, as another yeah. character. Um, although you don't do so much of that, but a lot of my stuff was directly to camera or, or indeed being the camera. Uh, and the CGI in the movie comes from the aptly named Weta. Um, yeah. Richard, you're no stranger to their work. Did Weta do the CGI? I didn't know that. <laughs> Did they? How impressed were you uh, with Weta's uh, representation of Tornado? Very impressed now that I know that it was Weta. It <laughs> always started as somebody else, didn't it? And then it sort of turns yeah. out. Um, sorry, ask the question again. Um, how impressed were you with their representation of tornadoes in middle America rather than uh, orcs in middle earth? Well, I mean, uh, what's interesting about you know what you see on the screen is that initially the concept for it is is something which comes out of the imagination of the writers you go looking for it on youtube and then you find it you know yeah. the fire tornado we we saw one you know on youtube which was real and then i think what what the digital work that has happened in post production is is very faithful to something that's real and and you could expand that and try and make it more fantastical but they haven't they've kept it they've kept it really real and and quite minimal actually in places yeah yeah, the, uh, the and I think it's also aided by the, the found footage style also aids that because uh, 
to see these things through <clears throat> through what is someone's phone or someone's personal camera um, makes them feel the more real and uh, the more immediate, I think. Yeah. And finally, guys, as Brits, we luckily don't really have to endure this kind of weather here in this country, at least. Uh, well, there's a line in the film about the possibility of storms like this coming to London. I wondered how you think you'd fare if you encountered a real storm of that nature. Uh, if, if a storm like that came to London, I'd probably hide in a red telephone box. <laughs> no, too much glass. Think it through, Armitage. Uh, no, they're made of plexiglass now, aren't they? He's thought it through. I've thought it through. <laughs> that would be great, though, wouldn't it? Like, Into the Storm 2, you could hide in a red phone box and be like... About the whole, mo the whole movie. <laughs> I'm trying to get the money in. Water poured in the top. <laughs> Just, thanks, Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thanks.